Welcome to my presentation on content distribution networks. We're going to cover some of the motivation behind content distribution networks as well as some of the technical details that make them feasible. A content distribution network is a set of servers that are distributed throughout the network to reduce load on servers that originate the content. Uh, they mirror some or all of the data and serve it on behalf of the origin servers. Uh, some of the desired benefits can include reduced latency, efficiency in network utilization, and distribution of load throughout the network. The distributed content is typically static, such as images, large files, and videos. The content distribution networks would have a hard time with the dynamic content because they don't actually mimic parts of your application. They just duplicate the static content usually. Uh, why might we want content distribution networks? Well. The CDN providers have a large number of content servers, and they may have these, you know, very close to the users. Uh, they could be distributed throughout ISPs or various places across the globe. Uh, this might be very hard for, you know, a company to actually set up themselves. So by using these providers for their static content, they can really reduce the latency and load on their servers when they have their users actually requesting the content. Uh, so yeah, the content servers are, you know, sometimes in very hard to reach edge, edge networks. They can be in many, many ISPs really close to the end users. And, you know, the aggregate throughput of the, the CDN can be much, much larger than what the, you know, the customer using the CDN provider could possibly hope to get through a single server. Uh, also, like, due to the distribution of their servers, they can have very high uptime as you know if one server goes down uh, a user can be routed you know, dynamically to another system there's a couple different main techniques that are used for content distribution networks uh, the first is DNS redirection so uh, the customer who wants to use the CDN provider they'll make some modifications to the DNS and give some of the control over to the CDN provider so that the CDN is actually responsible for resolving the domain to the IP address of the content server. Uh, that way, you know, the content server will get this request, and then, you know, if it doesn't have the content, it can forward the request onto the origin server, and then it can cache the returned content, or it can just immediately handle that request in the origin server, which is, you know, the customer server that originally has the set of content never even has to see the request come to it. Uh, or the CDN can actually put some hooks into the customer's application so that they do URL rewriting with this way. Instead of actually having, you know, the the domain name return back, you know, in the URL for an image, they may actually just directly insert the IP address of one of the content servers. This way you can actually save the DNS lookup from the client. Uh, so as we see in the next one, we might actually replace you know, the customer's URL with you know, the URL for the content server plus you know, some unique identifier that tells the content server, hey, here's what I'm actually looking for. So in this particular case, we're still going to do the, the DNS lookup, but as we note in the last point here, we can just replace it directly with the IP address so we don't have to have that lookup. So we see here uh, how we might have a typical single server in the center. We would have all the different links that the clients would have to traverse if they want to get some content, some image, or some video or music. Uh, and we see that you know, some of these links are going to be heavily loaded uh, when we have all these clients trying to access that content at once. And also that single server is going to be handling every single client. So now if we kind of take a look at how a content distribution network might work. Uh, we have all these content servers that are, you know, on the edge of the networks close to where the clients actually are, and we still have our origin server where it was before, and all the clients are there as well. But now, each of the clients may be able to go directly to the content server to get its image or video. So then, the load is distributed much nicer along the network, Lots of links that were traversed before may not even have to be traversed, and we also distribute the load across all the different servers. So the customer's origin server can sit there, and you know, while it has the static content, 
many of the clients won't even have to go to it to retrieve that. So it'll make it much easier for the customer to scale uh, if they're using the CDN provider to handle a lot of their load and duplication of content across the edge networks. Now we're just going to talk uh, through a number of the ways that a request would go you know, first in a, a traditional non-CDN serving situation, then with uh, the DNS resolution technique. DNS re redirecting and then with the re URL rewriting technique. So with the traditional non-CDN serving, uh, the client's going to resolve the DNS name of the server and then it's going to send the request to the server, the server is going to respond. However, with DNS re redirection, we have a few more pieces to it. So in this case, let's say the client, you know, requests a certain page is going to look up uh, you know, CNN.com. This is actually going to go to the authority of DNS for, for CNN. However, in this case, they've given that responsibility over to the CDN provider, such as Akamai. Uh, so in this case, then, the Akamai software, when it's doing this DNS, DNS resolution handling, is actually going to look at the request, you know, the client information, and it's going to return back the IP address for the appropriate content server. Uh, their algorithms for doing this might be based on load of the content servers, proximity of the client to the servers, and various statistics such as that. This will allow the client to be sending their request to a content server that will give them an optimal response time and also help with load on the network. So now once the client actually has resolved the IP address of the content server, the client will send its request to the content server. And uh, if the content server doesn't have the static content cached, it may have to forward this request onto the origin server. Uh, and then the content server will respond back to the client after it's retrieved the data from the origin server if it didn't have it. But in most cases, it would be expected that the content server would be able to immediately respond back to the client without ever having to send a request to the origin server. Now, with URL rewriting, will the client will resolve the server name. Now it will actually resolve to the origin server. Oh, with URL rewriting, a lot of the uh, intelligence is in the client application where the you know CD some software that will allow the origin server to inject some URLs that will actually point directly to the content servers. So the client will send the request, it will go to the origin server, the software on the server will you know, look at the client and then rewrite the URLs sim similar to how the DNS resolution would resolve to a particular content server. Uh, will inject URLs that will point to the specific content server. So now the client, you know, had the original page request and then in the page we have all the you know URLs for the different content, the you know static videos or images that are in there. And then the client will send the request for each of these, which you know it may have the a DNS name that will point to the content server or it might just immediately have the IP address. So it'll go and grab that content, and the content server will respond back to the client. So that's a short summary of how content distribution networks function and why a user may want to use them.